Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, it's my great pleasure to give the presentation here. But here we would talk about some very interesting topic about the uh, catalytic oxidation of some. Um, Cardiff Catalysis Institute is one of the biggest uh, catalysis institute in the Europe, and his uh, director is uh, Graham Hutchings. is a pioneer work. He did pioneer work about cat gold catalysis, and uh, we got the great support from the. We got great support from the British industry like the BEP and uh, Johnson Matisse and uh, other companies to support our research. Um, before starting, I, I would do some advertisement. Okay, this is 2015 the World Conference in the Cardiff. And uh, this is one of the, I think, the biggest gold events in the recent year. And uh, Graham Hutchins and Haruta would be the chairman for this uh, conference. And uh, yeah, abstract is almost closed, but we still welcome to submit it to your work about gold. It's not only about catalysis work, but all the things related to gold, including the bell technologies and the mining or something. So welcome to Cardiff, the 2015. Okay, here we talk about this experiment. Um, generally, this is very famous industrial experiment to produce a monomer of the nylon. It's starting from cyclohexane and uh, get product of the alcohol and ketone. Generally, in industrial process, this is just an uh, auto-oxidation process. They don't need a catalyst. I just need a promoter to start in this auto-oxidation. Um, but the point is, as an industrial process, you have to limit the conversion to 4% to maintain the selectivity to the 85%. Otherwise, the auto-oxidation would be destroy everything. The most uh, proper promoting way is to use like the enzyme metallic catalyst to get the direct oxidation. But the point is this is, cannot be commercialized. Um, recent years they got a lot of the new work about catalytic oxidation from cyclohexane to the alcohol and the ketone. It's uh, pronounced as a very advanced work, but the point is is that really new catalysis or something tricky inside. Particularly, I mean, a lot of work is about to use gold catalyst for the catalytic oxidation. I mean, the, one of the first work published is by Graham Hutchins, use the gold, the titanium oxide spot gold as catalyst. And uh, later on, a lot of the work published data about uh, they always announced the very brilliant conversion and selectivity. But the point is, Recently, they got two papers, the Journal of Catalysis 2010, and our papers, PPC, PCCP in 2012, announced that the gold is not good catalyst. It's a very poor, even just a very select, like the blank expert. So what's wrong with that one? One side is very good, and another side is very poor. So what's wrong with gold catalyst in this catalytic oxidation? So the point is, when we identify the new catalysis, or what means new, I mean, so can we identify the new intermediate compounds, new reaction pathway, or can we identify the different catalytic activities? This is something we have to prove, but this kind of material generally liked in the new publications, they just announced a very good conversion and selectivity. So we got some like the black box experiment condition. They put, uh, they put oxygen and cyclohexane inside, and we got a lot of product. But generally, we know nothing about what's happened in the middle. Uh, the good thing is uh, we got a lot of technique to develop it, like the in-situ experiment. But the point is this experiment is a quite a heterogeneous experiment. They have the liquid phase and the gas phase. Uh, if we want to really conduct in situ experiment, it's very hot and mass experiment. It's got a lot of byproduct. But the point is, if you're starting from the intermediate compounds, pernoxide, and the de to study the deconvolution, decomposition of the pernoxide to different radicals, and this, under this reaction condition, we can control the room temperature and the generally the homogeneous liquid phase experiment. And in that case, we can get very cold and clean the reaction pathway, and we can use that one to identify the intermediate compound, because here, we have the dioxygen inside, 
They can help me help us to understand how the dioxide and dissociation happened under this reaction condition. So here we use a technique is called a spin trap EPR experiment. So generally you get a spin trap and they can attach your radical and prolong the lifetime of the radical. And then they can use EPR technique to catch the formation of the different radical. And uh, the EPR spin trap technology is, looks like, the one, like that one. They would get a different uh, radical. They, they can make use a standard material to understand what's this radical. This is oxygen center radical of the carbon center radical. So here we, we got some experiment. We prepare the catalyst, gold catalyst on the magnet oxide and uh, uh, use different amount of gold and uh, compare to oxidation. Finally, we found, yes, it's a uh, gold catalyst under this reaction condition is not so amazing. I mean, that it's very similar to a blank experiment. And if you notice the production of the chip, CHHP is a sexual hexane monoxide. We found the very similar catalytic performance between the gold catalyst and auto oxidation. So the point is, why the, the, the other people announced the very brilliant catalytic performance of gold, but they cannot repeat it? This is a very tricky problem. Um, in the two thousand, in the journal catalysis paper, there's a two thousand ten. He suggests that there are some big problem about the analytic tool. They suggest that they didn't collect all the thing and they got the over evaporation, and it suggests that they got a huge mass problem. So, but they have the, another explanation. So now this is auto oxidation. If we just put a cyclohexane monoxide inside and in the cyclohexane solution, and no any catalyst at the room temperature, we would get the profile of the different radical in that way. OK, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And later, we do the deconvolution of this profile, and we got the different radicals. It looks like we got three kind of radical, oxygen radical, pinoxide radical, and the carbon center radical. So, this is, we do the relative, relatively, it's the quantitative analysis about the product, the concentration of the different radical. Generally, get a 50% oxygen radical and 44% pinoxide radical. It looks like so this just a it's confirming this is just the auto oxidation pathway and the radical quenching which Charles are called this one. And this is reaction pathway. And later, if we put a gold catalyst inside, we got a very different radical profile. And after deconvolution, we can see that generally we got a lot of oxygen, oxygen radical, but a very small amount of the pinoxide radical and the two kinds of different carbon center radical. And we do the analysis about quantitative analysis, and the oxygen concentration increased to 81%, and the pinoxide radical is just 8%. So it looks like gold is very active for the, the dioxygen dissociation and for this for the evolution of the radical. So this is why he can promote it auto oxidation pathway and give a good activity. But the point is we have to point that auto oxidation reaction is a very very tricky experiment and it will be initiated very fastly and sometimes it will be initiated very slowly. So we can see the induction period about that one. So the point is the goat catalytic road of the gold is just working for the intermediate compound. It's not from, from, not from starting the oxidation of the cyclohexane. So it's really rely on the, how the happen of the auto oxidation. If the auto oxidation didn't happen, the gold catalyst don't show the catalytic performance. And once the auto oxidation happens, they can promote it 
reaction pathway. So I think this is the main reason why some people report very good cattle performance, but finally some people find this is just nothing. So here we do the comparison. We can see that generally by using the gold catalyst, it really improves the dioxygen dissociation. But the point is that this dioxygen dissociation is only happening in the intermediate compound. They cannot improve the dioxygen from air. So this is a really shortage of the gold catalyst. So it's not a strong catalyst for the oxygen from the air for activation. So now we talk about it. In the 2010, they mentioned that the gold working as just an initiator, but with a poor catalytic performance. But the point is now we know his uh, function is not only an initiator. He worked a lot about the intermediate compounds. And he do the deoxygen, dioxygen dissociation. So finally, is this catalyst of initiator? So it's very difficult to uh, give the clear explanation about the role of gold, but we have to see that they have the combined role of the initiator and the catalyst. He working as catalyst for the dissociation of pornoxide in the media compound, but after dissociation, he promoted the autoxidation pathway, so he's also an initiator. So conclusion is that one. So we designed the a new, new methodology to identify this kind of compli complicated reaction pathway. Uh, generally, if you have the very difficult chemical environment, you have to simplify it, and uh, jumping either jumping from the really in situ experiment under the very harsh reaction condition, or you have to do the very high volume characterization surface science. And the point is, the signal you got it, maybe you cannot combine together because the real reaction condition is very difficult to perform it. So what we do is we use the intermediate compound to clear, to study clear evolution of the intermediate compound. Then they can give the more detailed information about how the evolution of the intermediate compound and they give the direct evidence about this reaction pathway. And uh, later on, uh, we just published published this review in the PCCP about the uh, catalytic oxidation and the auto oxidation. Uh, we mentioned a lot of the tricky thing about the mistake and the misunderstanding this in this area. So if you are interested, please read that one. So here we have to acknowledgement. So the Marco Counter is my college, former college now working in the University of Sheffield and the Graham Hutchings, David Knight. Definitely we have to thank the Case Winston and uh, we are our funding support from the investor company. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions? Questions, one here, okay. Yeah. Interesting to use uh, gold on magnesium oxide. Yes. Uh, it didn't come clear to me uh, at what conversion do you run the reaction? In industrial applications, they run the reaction at a conversion of 4 to 5 percent. Yes. And what is your conversion, please? I okay. missed it. Okay, so. Oh, I see now. Yeah, this one. Okay. So generally, Good. our call. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, next question. Uh, you have, of course, the ketone and the alcohol. Yeah. And you get a lot of uh, cyclohyx, uh, C H A P to yeah. name, yeah, yeah. cyclohexyl hydroperoxide. And um, when you add now to your gold magnesium oxide, yeah. boric acid, as they do in the case of an industrial unit, what is the ratio? between alcohol and ketone? Oh, this is a very interesting point. I think that this is a very important question. Uh, generally, for the industrial process, the uh, alcohol-ketone ratio is 2 to 1. But the point is, we notified, uh, and this is uh, very char characteristic uh, from autoxidation. They gave the ratio 2 to 1. 
And this is why we question the previous the previous study by other people because they announced that it's a catalytic oxidation, but they give the ratio is just that ratio, two to one or one to one. So we use this ratio alcohol ketone to make a judgment. Our experiment is a catalytic oxidation or this is the auto oxidation. Uh, we generally we just uh, published one paper in the catalytic science and technology then uh, this month, and we developed another new catalyst, the polyoxymetallate, and they gave the pure 100% productivity of the alcohol, no ketone at all. So we and we do also we do the EPR experiment. We found that catalyst can give the 100% selectivity to dioxide dioxygen dissociation. So in that case, we believe we found some really catalyst for catalytic oxidation. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, may I have a third question, please? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, with respect to the crystal size of the gold, yeah. can you see a difference if you have nanocrystalline uh, particles or larger particles of gold because yeah. Haruta mentioned something like that in other cases. Okay, uh, this is the point. We prepare the catalyst by the impregnation. Mm -hmm. So they combine the both the big particle and the small particle. But they have also prepared the gold by other method and got a very small particle, about five nanometers. And we found there's no difference about this big particle and small particle between that, in that case. Any more questions? No more questions? No. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, somebody? Would, no? no oh, okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.